This is the last episode of this series, but in a few minutes I will talk about what is going on. First, I will show you a new control net version that you can use with the Z image model. Sorry about that, those damn bunnies are everywhere. So back to Z image. Soon after the first version, we now have the second version of the Turbo Fun Control Net Union 2 model. This one has some improvements and better control, but it is also affected by the number of steps. It can do canny, pose, and depth like the other model, just a little better. For control net strength, go between 0.65 and 0.9. So let's go to ComfyUI and test these. The first time I ran the new version of ControlNet, I got a long error, but it was fixed once I updated ComfyUI. I have here three workflows, one for pose, one for depth, and one for canny. All are the same, only the settings are different. So let's start with the first one. If you did not use ZImage before, please check episode 72 to learn about it, since I explain it in more detail there. You just download all the models in the respective folders, and you should be good to go. For this new version of ControlNet, I added a link here, so you download it and place it in the Model Patches folder. After the download is finished, since it is around 6 GB so it can take some time, you can press the R key to refresh node definitions. Then, in the Model Patcher loader, you load the new ControlNet. You will see version 2 in the list, and you select that. Then you add the prompt you want. In my case, a woman doing yoga. I loaded a photo of this woman in a difficult pose. Without control net, it would be hard to prompt that position. For the preprocessor, I used the DW preprocessor. This one will create a skeleton-like pose that the AI can understand, since each bone has a different color. It did miss a bone in this pose, and you will see sometimes that this will influence the results. But let's check what we got. If we compare before and after, we can see we got a quite similar pose. Even if it is not perfect the first time, you can try a different seed. It also depends on what you prompt and how the model was trained. For example, if I try to prompt for a monk in a temple, the result looks like this. You can see the pose is not exactly the same. That is because, in the skeleton, that pose was missing one bone, so I get random poses for that foot. Sometimes it is how I want, sometimes it goes in a different direction. In some cases, you can try to use the Depth Anything preprocessor. When I run it, I get this Depth 3D looking map. But that map has the body of a woman and hair, and when I run it, I do not get the monk anymore. You could try to reduce the strength of the control net. Let's see what happens if I put 0.5. Now I got the monk back, but it lost some of the hand pose. So it is always a compromise between the strength of the control net and how exact you want the pose to be. I do recommend the pose preprocessor if you want diversity and still generate anything you want in that pose. Let's move to the second workflow with the depth preprocessor. I added here a 3D text of the word pixa, but you can use anything really and it will pick its dimensions. I used the depth anything preprocessor and you can see the depth map it creates. The areas in black are further away, white is closer to the camera, and gray is in between. I added a prompt and I want to create a gold text in the snow, and this is the result I got. It was quite fast and it would have taken a lot of time to do and render in a 3D software, so this is quite useful. Let's move to another useful one that uses Canny. For this one, I added a bunny sketch and I want to generate a watercolor painting that is colored from this sketch. I used the Canny preprocessor, and you should use it when you have a lot of details in the image that you want to keep. It finds the edges in the image, so it is very useful for line art and sketches. Let's check the results. Look how well it preserved the sketch and generated a colored version. If you want a little more creativity, you can reduce the strength of the control net, or you can try the head preprocessor. If I run it, you can see things are different compared to Canny. Canny detects strict, sharp edges based on contrast, while HED uses an AI model to find softer, more human-perceived outlines of objects. If we check the results, the bunny is a little different, but the lines look a bit better. It did not keep so many lines from the rough sketch. 
So try both preprocessors and see which one gives better results for your images. Also, try increasing the steps. If you increase the control net strength, it might help in some cases. Play with control net strength, reduce it to be more creative, and increase it to be more strict. You can also play with shift. Try different images, different preprocessors, and different prompts, and have some fun. In July 2024, I started my first episode on the Pixaroma YouTube channel. I released a new episode almost every week until today, when I published the last episode, number 73, at the end of December 2025. As I learned something new in Comfy UI, I started to make a tutorial and figure out how to explain it in an easy way so you could understand it. Since some subjects were new and difficult, maybe I was not always able to explain them the way I wanted because I did not understand them completely at the time, but I hope it was good enough to help the majority. We tested together a lot of workflows and crushed a few bunnies in the process. A lot of new models appeared since the release of the first episode and many more models will be released in the future. So why did I stop this series here? One of the reasons is that the interface looks completely different. If we look at the interface from episode one, the menu and many things were in different places compared to now. For beginners starting the series, it is already hard to figure out comfy UI without looking for menus that do not exist anymore. The interface will continue to change. And with the Nodes 2 version, probably in a few months, there will be even more changes. The second reason is that my comfy UI folder is huge with all the models I used in all the episodes and I want to start fresh with only the models I actually use and also have everything more organized. So starting at the beginning of January 2026, I am creating a new series from scratch, hoping that the experience I got in the last two years will help me create an even better series. My plan is to do a big episode one with all the basics you need to get started, and then from episode two to continue normally with new models as they are released. So I'm taking a break since the holidays are here, and I will reinstall Windows, then start working on the first episode of the Comfy UI course. Everything will be free, as always, on YouTube and on Discord. I will not release new tutorials on the Pixaroma channel, and most likely not on AI2 Play either until I finish the first episode of the new series. So keep an eye on it at the beginning of January 2026. Since there will be no new videos, there will also be no new income from YouTube. So any support through likes, super thanks, or membership subscriptions is welcome. Thank you, Legends, and everyone who supported this channel over the last year. I hope you will continue doing that for the next series as well. Check Discord for questions, workflows, and AI challenges. Happy holidays, and I will see you on Discord.